What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Phil Sneer Games Character Spotlight with Mike and Brock. I'm Mike. I'm Brock, and today we're going to talk about Galacticon. Past, present, and future. <laughs> number number 35. Yeah. I've been to about 25 of them, probably. I have been to as many as I've... Well, I've been to 33 in person and two where I wasn't allowed in the country. Yes. <laughs> Well, in 2020, none of us were allowed to go. So, in 2021, I was allowed, but I would have had to take two weeks off prior <laughs> for for uh, what, what do they call that? Um, quarantine. Quarantine. Yeah. And then two weeks after I got back, so I'm like, I'm not losing a month's work. <laughs> no. <laughs> month wage. But you would have got to see Sam. <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't go to that one because I had a new baby at the house and didn't want to didn't want to risk anything. No. And uh, but yeah, we were back in Jamestown. Yeah, I love Jamestown. That's my favorite location for Galacticon. Yep. Just for the memories. Mm -hmm. It's an easy trip for me too. What 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 it meant. Mm Hmm. And uh, this year, you know, guys, some guys did destroy your golf. Mm Hmm. Uh, I didn't. Um, it was just, you know, coming from a different country, you know, I would have had to get up super early. Yeah. Just a lot of added things to it. I just, I, I, I did want to do it, but I just, you know, and I was bringing somebody. Yeah. Uh, I drove down with Chris Sinclair and I didn't want to, you know, Hey Chris, guess what we're going to do? <laughs> Understandable. I only went up on Saturday. I came up Saturday and left Saturday. <laughs> And same as when we went to uh, uh, Ilio de Paulo's. I had mm-hmm. no plans on going to that just because, uh, you know, that meal would have ran me about 50 something dollars, you mm-hmm. know, Canadian. I'm like, eh. And then uh, Grant Pachoco had a, uh, he had bought his meal and I ended up, he ended up giving me his uh, food voucher. He had some travel issues, I think. <laughs> yeah, he got a call back mm-hmm. uh, to do um, a, a voice for Universal Studios. So that was pretty, you know, it's a full-time paying gig. So Nice. I, I don't know if he's talked about it or not. He told me about it, but Uh-oh. Th- thank you, Grant. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not giving away anything because I, I don't know if he got it or not, you know. <laughs> right, right. Either way, super cool. Yep. And uh, yeah, the food, it was the average. Because it was just buffet style. I, mm. I suppose, like, when I, because I've been to Ilios before, and so when I did a sit-down meal, the food was good. Yeah. So I think because it's, uh, you know, they're feeding a large group, they just, I found the chicken to be kind of dry. Mm-hmm. So the, 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 the pasta was decent. The sauce was a bit runny. You know, nothing, <laughs> there was wasn't anything spectacular, but you know, I'd, I'd give it like a six out of ten. There you go. <laughs> Good times. And then that Friday night, uh, we got back. We pulled into the uh, the restaurant, not the, sorry, the hotel, pretty late. And uh, I got a parking spot right up front. That's I, I cool. heard that you know, hey, parking is going to be tough. I think Kevin Butcher texted me and said, "Dude, parking's insane." And I put we've we me and you and Sam have, have actually stayed at that hotel before. Okay, it, it, it was a days in. It's like right right yep. downtown New York. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I knew right where it was, and I knew the parking situation. I'm like, "Yeah, it's pretty crap parking." Because I think the, one of the times I actually had to park on the street. This time I pulled in parking spot right outside the door. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Me nice. and, Chris, and Chris had worked night shifts, so he had been up about 26 hours. 27 oh, no. hours. <laughs> and uh, he's like, I'm just going to bed. And as soon as we, we get there, they're like, yeah, by the way, your room doesn't have air conditioning. Oh, that's nice. I'm like, that's fabulous. <laughs> so go, but we gave you a fan. Oh, even better. <laughs> and so I'm used to a super cold house because my wife likes it cold. Right, right. And uh, I was dying. 
I got such horrible night's sleep. Oh no. Chris was out because he had been up for twenty right, he's exhausted. <laughs> and uh so I just got up early, uh grabbed a shower, went downstairs, grabbed something to eat. And uh it was funny because there was two guys sitting beside me and they're talking about Letter Kenny, the TV show. Yeah. I I I chimed in <laughs> and started talking to him about it. And then afterwards one guy comes up to me, he's like, Hey. You're Mike Fortune from the uh, Mike and Brock show. <laughs> like, hey, it's the first he's, time I got recognized. He's one of the 164. <laughs> uh, 163 now. We lost one. Oh, we lost one. Boo. Boo. <laughs> Another and, bot um, account, probably. <laughs> I, I, I feel bad because they ended up going to Galacticon. So they were Galacticon guys that I had never met. Uh huh. And uh, the one guy's name was Kevin. Okay. And then there was Kevin's friend, and I can't remember his name. He was the one that recognized me, but uh, I feel bad because I don't remember his name, but I, I ended up talking to those guys quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but yeah, that Friday night, we, we were both out cold. I had, I was going to go to Bob Evans for breakfast because we don't have Bob Evans in Canada, and mm -hmm. I like to eat some biscuits and gravy, and we also don't have biscuits and gravy in Canada. Really? I love biscuits and gravy. And so our hotel had biscuits and gravy. Well, there you go. Sorry. I was a happy camper. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty American thing, biscuits and gravy. <laughs> we have poutine or poutine. Uh -huh. uh, you guys have biscuits and gravy. <laughs> nice. And then when we started the con, it was just pouring down rain. Yeah. And, uh, I got there. I brought in my stuff. I saw you mm -hmm. and a bunch of guys outside the door. And Todd pulls up in his car and he's like, I need help bringing stuff in. And so four guys watched Todd try to, <laughs> they held the door for us. So we just ran yeah. a bunch of stuff in. And, uh, yeah, and then it was, uh, you know, the meet and greet where you're just talking to people. Mm -hmm. And then you're getting your handouts and stuff. Yeah, there was a lot this year. The first person to give me a handout this year was Kevin Butcher. Yes. And he gave me the brain. The brain. I got the brain right here. And it was funny. It took me a second to realize that it's based off Bobby the brain. The jacket gave it away. I'm like, oh, man. I felt <laughs> so on, stupid Mike. after I saw that. <laughs> it's a but fun card. It's a manager card. Yeah. I told Kevin I'm trying to figure out a way to, uh, you know, he he calls it the brain's brood. I like it. So I'm uh, going to try to try to figure out a good place to put it and who he can manage. Mm -hmm. Definitely but, a fun card. Yeah, it is. This is the kind of stuff I like because you could you could draft this in any Fed. Yeah. No question. Except maybe Legends. Uh, yeah, you could still put it there. Like, <laughs> why not? Yeah, we don't know if any of this stuff is still available. You'll have to reach out to the individual people who made the stuff. Yeah. So that was Kevin Butcher again. If uh, someone likes this stuff, they can get a hold I'm, of Kevin through the message boards. I'm out of focus. That's right. I'll probably be showing. I'll be showing more cards. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> and I think the next set I got was from uh, you. From me, <laughs> I got the Mighty Marble. Which oh I yeah, that's, you you won that on the on the stream for yeah. the Marble. Not everybody thing. got this. No, you had to win it. Yeah, we had to win it, and I won it. Was you, it Kevin right? Butcher, and Kathy Evans got one. Oh, did they? Yeah, from winning it. <laughs> had, to, had to come out and play it on uh, the Stream Raiders. That's right. And next is the, uh, the Royal Violet. Mm -hmm. It's a very tough manager. Yeah, he's more of a player coach kind of guy. <laughs> he just accompanies all his guys to ringside, so that's why he's he's got the distractor rating. I gave him a higher one because... Is dangerous. And for the longest time, I thought it was a female. Really? 
because the name Violet. Oh, okay. It wasn't until after I was looking at it, I'm like, hold on. No, I, that could be a male. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dude. It's formerly Raja Ring Royalty, the frog. Oh, okay. The frog prince turned into the king. You'd know that if I finished the handbook in time. <laughs> Which didn't happen. <laughs> and then Blood Red. That's his royal guard. Yeah. He's an interesting one. He's, mm -hmm. he's more of a... Uh, uh, he's still good. But his, you know, he's got that uh, a special finisher as well. It's gimmicky. Basically, yeah. he's only going to put the, the, the finisher on you if you're bleeding because he the seeing red. It's a submission hold where it's a, it's a step over cross face, yeah. STF, and he wants to, he wants to feel the blood running down their face as he has it applied, so that's why he won't do it until the wrestler's bleeding. Again, this would all be exp explained in the handbook had the handbook been done. And then I got two cards with an alternate, the limited bloody edition, bloody variant. Mm-hmm. And the stats are identical. They're just in different orders. Yeah, I just scrambled up the defense a little bit. Yeah. And her deal is she's uh, Royal Violet's sister who was sent ahead of time to basically prepare the world for his arrival. And everyone just thought she was crazy. She she got locked up in a psychiatric, psychiatric hospital and eventually did go crazy. So she's looking for revenge on all the women who wronged Royal Violet as he was trying to find true love to break the frog curse. <laughs> so um, these two are two of the tougher cards I've made. Uh, Blood Red and Rose Gold. But they're supposed to be like the, the heaviest for this guy who's basically going to be like the evil dude who takes over NDW yeah. by force. So he needs some pretty heavy people with him. And then around noon, our uh, we had a um, our, our our Mike Brock and sometimes Jeff episode drop because we drop it for Galacticon. Uh huh. They played it there for a little bit, and <laughs> it was with uh, Mr. Rob Bobian. Mm hmm. And he introduced his two legends for uh, Cronus. Mm hmm. He introduced a big superstar Cronus card. Yes. And a galactic giant. Mm hmm. Excuse me. And I can tell you, they, they're kind of tough. They are. They are. As they should be. They're Cronus guys. They're, you know, yeah. clones of two of the bigger names in the world. So. But yeah, if you, if you, uh, like, Cronus, you could hit Rob up. I think there's still a PDF available of this, at least, if not printed cards. So, yeah, hit Rob up. Again, Not we're not positive of these things, but we'll point you in the right direction. And then, uh, I'm just going in the order which I receive things. So I'm... Oh, okay. <laughs> and then I got my, my packet. Okay. My, go. my Galacticon packet. This? Oh, yeah, I got that. Sorry, I I'd left that upstairs. That, that's from Grant. All right, it's a, a set of foreign objects, much like Dave Little's uh, foreign objects for... Legends. For Legends. These are Champions of the Galaxy themed. And they're really nice. They're printed on playing cards. Like actual playing card size and cut and everything. Just go through some of them. You have a, a title belt, a Rylock rod... Loaded glove. Yeah, you know, there's chair, microphone, shock turnbuckle pad, metal trash container, uh, Cygnus black, uh, brass knuckles, a fan's drink. That's a good one. Holographic monitor, ring steps. You know, all kinds of cool stuff. Caster chain, ring bell on hammer, and then, and of course, a hover camera. So basically, the idea, what Grant said is the idea behind these is if you're ever in a situation where a random weapon is used on one of the charts or something, you just draw one of these cards. 
So it's pretty cool. Definitely get some use out of those. No, I, I, I will. It's just like I, what, what I do with uh, David Littles. Mm-hmm. Anything to randomize stuff more is, is right up my alley. Yeah. Save me from thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Especially over small little details like that. Right. And I'm sure knowing Grant, they'll probably make expansion packs for those over the years <laughs> as new stuff is introduced to the game. Then, of course, we got a set of cards. We got the uh, the black and white killing machine. This you had to be at Jamestown to get. That's so it's the bounty, bounty hunter, hunter in, in between. Mm-hmm. It's so great. I love that art- artwork by Warner. And I believe the stats are the same. I don't have the killing machine card nearby. But I'm pretty sure the stats are the same as the original card. Very well could be. It's been a long time since I used Killing Machine, so. Mm-hmm. But that was the in-person exclusive. There were two in-person exclusives, I believe. Yep. I believe the other one was the horizontal Bruno San Martino with automatic champion stats. No, my Bruno's foil. Mm-hmm. You have a foil one as well, but you're yes. the hall of it says. I got it in the stupid sleeve, so you can't really tell. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, he's a little tougher on the on the uh on the foil one. Mm-hmm. These foil cards are a little hard to read. He is he is a little tough. Double finisher, zero plus three, minus four power, two A's, two B's, zero pin. Mm-hmm. And cage. Yeah. <laughs> Bruno had a lot of cage matches, so that makes sense. And he hardly ever lost either. So <laughs> and it's funny because he's got like test of strength and series of punches power. So I think the only people he could lose to are Andre and Mark Henry. <laughs> makes sense. That was a shtick. So he's uh I will definitely be using him in one of my uh in my legends fed. Yeah, he's fun. Got another guy. Pinnacle. Foil pinnacle. Uh the finisher is something to be desired. I guess he's supposed to look at your eyes and zap you somehow and you can just turn and look away. Mm-hmm. It's if automatic. He hits, if he hits it, it's an automatic victory, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so. He's a tough card. Yeah. Two add, one moves. An auto, a finisher that if you, you have to roll four, five, or six on the foil version. On the regular version, I think it's a five or six to automatically end the, end the match. Then we got a uh, an independent, the A kid. A kid, it's just a kid. Yeah, this looks like a kid. This is uh, Axiom from NXT, one half of their tag team champions right now. Oh, really? Yeah, this is him unmasked. I still don't know who it is. I've never watched NXT. <laughs> I don't have cable. Uh, it'll be moving to Netflix soon, I believe. But at five foot eight. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's probably in real life he's probably five 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 two somewhere in there who <laughs> <laughs> maybe they're exaggerating the other way just to make him smaller <laughs> then the last card for the giveaway was dirty dick buyer as himself yeah without the mask we had this because uh you know, they went to Destroyer Park Golf and then mm-hmm. you know, so it was all that whole Buffalo area. Yes. So this card's not as tough as his Destroyer card, but you can have them. Mm-hmm. You know, and then later on, change over. Or have them both in a Cronus Fed. Yep. <laughs> then the next cards I got were from... Uh, Loud and noxious. Yes. The 20th anniversary of Vision and Stormchild. Yes. 
to get these, you had to play his song. Or subscribe to his YouTube channel yeah. for his new music. I'll put the link below, so if you want to help him out here, I don't know if this will probably won't get that in focus enough. Nah, that ain't going to work, but oh. <laughs> Mia Mara. There's the link there. I'll post the link also in... Oh, you might be able to scan that QR code now. It's funny, because I... I uh... Try and scan that right there. It'll take you right to his music. I I don't have Spotify, so I have Apple Music, so I'm trying to download it. And he's like, yeah, just type in Mia Mara. I did, and then like 85 things come up, because it's a popular Greek saying. <laughs> Let me scan the QR code that I just shared there. And uh, so we went through it. And so I, I, I played it a couple times just so he could, you know, get, to, get some. Get yeah. Some in. I'm out of focus again. But yeah, it was the 20th anniversary of Synergy. I remember getting these back in 2004. <laughs> and then uh, <clears throat> the last thing I bought. So one of our friends and a regular con guy who had the second longest streak next to me, Mr. Jim Steele. Mm-hmm. Jim fell and broke his hip just before Galacticon. Yes. And so he was having some, some, uh, I guess, uh, possibly financial issues. So everybody decided to do a fundraiser for Jim. And you could buy things. One of the things was Santa Wolf. Nice. Very fitting for Jim. Yep. So I made sure I went up, I bought a, a, uh, a Santa Wolf card. I never had one. Now I do. It's a pretty sought after card. So all the all the proceeds for the Santa Wolf sales went to Mr. Jim Steele. I don't know how much was raised because that's you know none of my business. Right, right. But we know it's going to a good dude. So yep, definitely worth it. But the last thing, a sticker, Galacticon. They use what the old I? logo. I like it. I don't know where I put my sticker. Oh no. <laughs> I didn't stick it to anything yet. I got more stuff than you somehow. What'd you get? I got from Thomas Keen, Geisha, and Yakuza. A couple of Titans. And then Barry Walsh had some cards for charity. Oh, yeah. I was, gonna, I was actually going to buy them, and then uh, I just didn't see them, and because I only wanted the tag team. I think we'll okay, start with them. The Eliminators. Yeah. Uh, Perry Saturn and John Cronus. This is for a $20 dollar donation to the Tragos Thez Hall of Fame. Yeah, to you get got these all four cards. $20. And then we got Mickey James and Kana, better known as Asuka in the States. Um. So, because Grant Grant was opening those beside me, and I was telling him I, I have a John Crona story. Oh yeah. So when I was very early starting out, uh, I got backstage at an ECW show, mm -hmm. and I was talking to John Cronus, and uh, because I had wanted to be in his, he was a big guy. He was like six four, and he could do high flying moves. Yeah. And. I, I thought, oh, that's so cool. That'd be unexpected. No one could, you know. And so I was talking to him. Hey, you know, I'm just starting out. I, you know what? And he took time to uh, talk to me about what he does, his training, how he got into it, you know, to, to do the high-flying moves. Mm -hmm. And uh, he didn't have to, but, you know, he did. And he was one of these guys yeah. that, you know, also had his personal demons that ended up getting the better of him. Right. It's unfortunate. But uh, yeah, I was a big John Cronus fan and always tried to, you know, support him because yeah. of him trying to help me out when I was just That's starting. Cool. See, I don't, I think those, I think I can confirm that those were sold out. I think Barry said he ran out of those, but I'm not positive. If you want to check, you can reach out to him. Uh, these are still available on BroxterBillets.com if you want to pick up a set. Um, I think TK still has his available if you want to reach out to him. And I believe um, Jacks are still available too with, uh, you know, the same, same rules apply. You have to either subscribe to his Twitch channel or prove that you've played his music or not his Twitch, his YouTube. Yeah. 
So, yeah, it's a pretty good haul. Pretty good haul from Galacticon. One of the I, better hauls I've had in a long time. Yeah, like it's usually like one or two stuff, two things here or there, you know. But it's nice. It's nice to see that kind of stuff making then, its way back in. And then tournaments had started. Did you enter any on Saturday? I did. I lost in the first round of all but one. <laughs> I made it to the second round of the um the FTR tournament. Oh, okay. <laughs> or the um, women's tournament. The women's tournament. I uh like most of my Galacticons, I spend the time talking to people. I go around, sit and talk. Right. Um, and this year I spent a lot of time talking to, uh, one of our members, Smoke. Mm -hmm. Uh, people may not know, but you know, he was letting people know Smoke's battling not one, but two forms of cancer. And, uh, so we're all wishing him well. And so I spent a lot of time just helping him out. Yeah. And, uh, just hanging out and talking with him. He's a great guy. I really hope he, uh. He pulls through this well because he's just a top-notch person. And uh, then, you know, talking to so many Kevins. <laughs> Kevins and uh, Todd's. <laughs> There's a lot of a lot of Kevins, a lot of Todd's. We had, yeah, because we had, uh, well, how many Todd's did we have? There's only two Todd's, maybe. Two Todd's. Todd, yeah. Todd Wojcicki. Fort Wojcicki. Took, mm -hmm. took time out from his new baby to yeah, his wife gave him some some time out. To, <laughs> to, I forgot uh, how big he was. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's close to my size. Yeah, he's like six <laughs> four, six five in that area. <laughs> and then he's got the big beard too, because we both didn't recognize him. Yeah, <laughs> we're like this guy's coming up talking to us. Who is he? I don't know. <laughs> the beard threw us. And then we put it together. <laughs> Because I talked to him pretty recently about being on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's the beard, because last time we saw him, he, he didn't have a beard. I don't think so. It was like me when I grew my great big <laughs> beard. No one recognized me until I started talking. They're like, holy crap. <laughs> Beards can throw you. They can. <laughs> yeah, it was good to see everybody. I, I, I'm glad I was able to make it out. I mean, there's just a lot going on. Here, uh, so with a new baby and everything, so it was tough to commit to a whole weekend. But with it being in Jamestown, it was an easy there and back day trip for me. It was nice to see everybody. Like you said, that's what I, that's the reason I went. You know, I could care less if I played in a single tournament. I I kind of felt bad because the first tournament, Troy's like, I need one more person. He just kept looking at me, and I'm finally like, all right, <laughs> I'll take the last name. <laughs> no, I had. Uh... They go, last turn of the day. I'm like, you know, I haven't gone in any tournaments, and I should probably, you know, see if I can hurry up and win one. Mm -hmm. I usually, you know, I, I try to get my one win per year in. Yeah. And uh, it was a Lucille Ball tournament, so it's mm -hmm. all female wrestlers only, and I, I drew a wrestler called Storm. Yes. That's the one to draw. <laughs> and uh, my first opponent, I think, was Kevin Butcher. And I played him, and I won. And then my second opponent was uh, Josh, one one of the, the the two also regulars who have been to probably twenty of these mm -hmm, at least. And, Josh. and the funny thing is, he threw me into the turnbuckle. I rolled double ones. Uh oh. <laughs> he rolled pin, and then I rolled my plus three finish. <laughs> and it was over. That's how quick the match was. Yeah. My next opponent, I, I don't I don't remember the wrestlers who they had. Was mm -hmm. Jeff? She John, took out all of Wisconsin. Friend. Yeah. <laughs> and what does he do? He throws me into the turnbuckle. <laughs> I roll double ones. <laughs> pin. He kicks out. I roll my plus three finisher, and the match is over. Just like that, I finish the two best friends in the <laughs> exact same way. It's fitting. And then, uh, and then I had to take on Grant Pachoco. And I'm like, now I was playing in the back where there's like a little area with a table and a, and a bench. So I'm not sitting, you know, I'm away from everyone. Mm -hmm. 
And Grant's like, this is, you, you have it rigged to win back here, don't you? <laughs> and I just got on offense and just beat the holy hell out of him. I don't think he got an offensive move in all game. Just kicked, <laughs> kicked the crap out of whatever character. There he was had. a wide range of uh, talent in that, in that tournament. Yeah. There's FTR guys in there or women went in there and along with like giant women from the GWF who are just <laughs> taking their prisoner. And uh, my final opponent was uh, Frank Troy on the boards. I think mm -hmm. I, I don't know who, what a lot of people will go by, uh, you know, other names on the board. I don't know who's everyone <laughs> other name is. Right. Right. He might be Troy Xavier, Frank, uh, but yeah, I I don't know who he had. I just quickly dispatched him. The match is actually <laughs> pretty quick. And then uh, I had to pose for pictures with the uh, Lucille Ball tournament trophy. Yes. <laughs> and we were supposed to go to a ball game that night. Mm -hmm. Got and rained out. Torrential downpour got rained out. So Pete Beck and myself were like, you know, I started, I, I actually went over to the stadium. Like, maybe someone will be here. You know, to, to tell the fans, mm -hmm. nope. <laughs> Pete's texting. I'm calling. <laughs> Nobody. I just want a hat. <laughs> We're like, we got 20 people here wanting merchandise. You send someone down for an hour, you'll make your money. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, they didn't. <laughs> Their loss. It was. And uh, so. Everybody closed up. We had to take our stuff. Usually we'd leave stuff there. Yeah, but, different venue. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so we had to go back. Everyone back, back back to the hotel. And we get up there. We get up to our hotel. And our air conditioning still wasn't fixed. Even though uh... they I'm like, well, get us a second fan. <laughs> and I saw these things in the hallway. I'm like, oh, they got air conditioners in the hallway. I'm going to go steal one of them. <laughs> No, they're dehumidifiers. <laughs> I heard Matt talking about it. Well, why didn't people just... Because I looked at it, Matt, they're dehumidifiers. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I was... I was. I told Chris, hold the door open because I'm going to go steal an air conditioner and run down the hallway with it. <laughs> and uh, no, I got it and it was a dehumidifier. I was uh, so bummer. As soon as I grabbed it, the water splashed out on me. On me. I'm like, ah, this is not an AC unit. <laughs> And uh, so we went up to some restaurant across the, the uh, someplace I'd never even heard of. It was across the street from, from the, uh, the restaurant. I went over with Chris. Chris sat with uh, Troy and uh, Troy, no, sorry, he sat with Kevin and Troy's fr and Kevin's friend, who I can't remember his name. I sat with Tim and Stu and Stu's wife. And we just talked about stuff. And then Stu leans in and he goes, can you tell me the dice bag story? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so I told him and he's laughing. He was laughing. <laughs> and uh, so they left. They were opening up a dance floor and turning up the music. So a bunch of us, the GWF guys, were like kind of spread out throughout this bar. Mm -hmm. we got together in one area. And uh, we sat and had a beer or two and then um like hey let's go to the cherry lounge that's <laughs> the thing you have to do when you're in jamestown go to the cherry lounge so right I, I sat with uh pete beck and uh was it pete yeah pete beck and uh rob and matt we just sat at a table chatted away other guys tom was there with chuck and chris and some other people on the other side of a, of a wall and then, of course, they shut down, so we went back to the hotel. <laughs> and, oh, yeah, Todd was also there in the Moleskis. And uh, we asked the lady, hey, can uh, we start drinking in the foyer <laughs> <laughs> so we don't wake up anybody if we go to somebody's room? And she was like, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Nice. Yeah, and then we, uh, we sat around this foyer, finishing off all the beer in... Uh, the cooler, which is quite quite a few beers. The Galacticon beer? Yeah. <laughs> there was both Molesky's, Pete Beck, Zeke, Kevin and his friend, 
I feel bad because I don't know his name. Uh, Todd was there. And I think that's it. And so we were just all talking, and slowly as, a, as the night wore on, people got up and left. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Chris Sinclair, the guy who I, I was with, there with. Mm -hmm. And uh, so by the end of the night, everyone was, everyone was talking about, hey, where should we put the, you know, the next Galacticon? Yeah. And so we came up, with, after Mike and them left. Jamestown. <laughs> we, we came up with a... Uh, uh, an order where everything should be. <laughs> nice. We're going to hold. We're, we're, we called it the drunken inner circle. <laughs> there you go. So we're we're going to hold a poll where uh, uh, where things should be, and everybody kept going. We got to have one in Canada. Uh huh. Everyone wants to have one in Canada. Everybody was like, "Yeah, we got to have one." And Mike Molesky's like, "No." <laughs> You can have like a SummerSlam, but you got you know this is WrestleMania. You got to prove you get the people. It, it oh, would no. be hard for them to get all their stuff across the border. I think without they bring raising. One box. Hmm. They bring one box. Do they? Oh, the Todd's yeah, car was full of stuff. Yeah, but everybody's ordering in advance now. Todd doesn't have to. You didn't have to bring everything. True. You have to bring all kinds of stuff, and then everybody would. Oh yeah, I'll take this and this and this. Now everybody just pre-orders, so you just bring what you. Mm -hmm. It's just a box. They still bring other stuff, though. And, uh, but yeah, it's it's not a big deal to bring some of that stuff. I've been doing this thirty five years. You can get a go across the border, <laughs> put it in multiple cars. <laughs> but we said we wouldn't do it next year. You give everybody like three years. Get a passport. Get a passport. Mm -hmm. Save up to get a passport. Mine's actually expiring in a couple couple months. And. Uh, you know, and and so we're like, okay, you know, have one in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, you know, the Molesquyville. <laughs> actual Pittsburgh. Yeah. I want actual Pittsburgh. That way I don't have to get a hotel. <laughs> uh, Maryland. Baltimore would be good. Yeah. Somebody brought up Connecticut. Yeah. Vegas. That'd be fun. Probably not cheap to do, though. <laughs> No, <laughs> but that'd be something Zeke said he could look into it and figure something out. So I, I trust Zeke. Mm -hmm. It'd just be a plane ticket. So it wouldn't be a whole family thing. Right. I remember because we talked about it at like Galacticon 5. I think it was Steve Minskoff <laughs> brought up the idea. Hey, if we reach Galacticon 20, Galacticon 20 is in Vegas. <laughs> it came and went. And we never did it. So... <laughs> Zeke was really pushing Go for 40. Yeah. Zeke was really pushing for the, uh, uh, Galacticon in, um, James in, uh, Vegas. And Hey, it definitely could be fun. Mm -hmm. There'd be no shortage of things to do. No. <clears throat> Vegas is definitely a cool town. I've been there. It's, it, it is fun. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, <laughs> it was about three in the morning when Barry comes around the corner with uh um uh now I'm drawing a blank on names. Milton. Okay. And the he's like, what are you guys doing up? And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, Oh, we're leaving. <laughs> right, we have a early flight. <laughs> but we haven't gone to bed yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But it was three AM. Yeah. That's not that's not unheard of to have to leave that early for a flight. No. And uh, so after that, we're like, you know, about 3.30, we finish off the beer. Zeke was. Let's <laughs> yeah, just say Zeke. Zeke was feeling no pain. He had a good time. He did. That's all that matters. Two nights in a row, he had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I remember we're going up to our, our hotel room and somebody left a six pack of beer on a table. Like at the end of the end of the hallway, I'm like, "Well, this is now mine." <laughs> and uh, so I uh, I brought it home with me, some I, red Irish pale ale from Buffalo. Hmm. That was your prize for not having air conditioning. 
Yep. And uh, <clears throat> the next day we had the can of the cup. At I think it was called venue something. Venue ten or venue nine. I wasn't even there. Yeah. <laughs> it, was a, it was a neat little place. Yeah, I think they did that because a lot of people just don't make it to the second day anymore. Yeah. I'm noticing. I didn't make it to the second day. And uh so we didn't we didn't need as big as a, a, a venue. Mm-hmm. And uh so we had we had they had another tournament going while I set up Canada Cup. And uh the can of the cup final it still makes me laugh. <laughs> Jack Briscoe, nice. Versus Ruth Fez. Okay. They won the they, they, they in a torture chamber match. Ooh, I'd, I'd pay to see that. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I'd pay to see that. Yeah. And then uh, it was won by it was won by Josh. Okay, cool. Who won like his third can of the cup? Mm-hmm. And uh, I brought a bunch of Canadian snacks. It was funny because because Jack's like, "Hey, I I found some maple maple sugar cookies." He goes, <laughs> "I brought them. I brought them just for Canada Cup." And I'm like, "Jack, I brought two boxes of them." <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, never mind then." <laughs> and it was funny because Todd's like, "Did you bring uh uh some all dressed chips?" I'm like. I knew you'd want them, Todd. I brought them. <laughs> venue 31 was the name of the venue. And it, it was funny because uh, some people were like, I can't believe how many Tim Hortons this town has. They have four. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty common. <laughs> I'm like, I live in Cambridge. We have 19 Tim Hortons. <laughs> 19. You got to go to Rochester, New York, if you want to see. They're like every block. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. <laughs> 19 Tim Hortons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like Dollar Generals. <laughs> I almost I, I wanted to go to a Dollar General. I've never been to one. But oh, really? <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's four in my zip code. <laughs> Not a very large place. Yeah, it's like Dollar Ramas up here. They're everywhere. <laughs> yeah, probably the same owners. And uh, I picked. I picked. Um, Cronus Raven. Okay. Because I took him all the way to the finals last year. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember who my first round opponent was. And uh, I rolled a double one pin. So I was oh, no. a second. And uh, yeah, that didn't go over well. And <laughs> no, 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 nothing you can do. No, that's a, that's a kick in the balls. <laughs> and, uh, so I ended up. Uh, it was Pete Beck, I think Pete Beck, Zeke. Oh no, no, it wasn't Zeke because Zeke almost hit us with his car as he was leaving him and Jack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris, Pete Beck, and myself were walking back to the hotel, and we spotted a. Uh, I took pictures of um, some tarp snake. Mem that's that's the name of the ball team, the tarp skunks. Uh -huh. Chris had seen them in a window, so I took pictures. <laughs> So Pete Beck, he's like, I'm staying Sunday. I'm staying till Monday. Give me money and I'll buy the hats for you guys. <laughs> so he bought hats for Jack and myself. <laughs> nice. And uh, so I, 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 no, getting it, I'll probably have to wait for next year because I don't want to <laughs> yeah. pay, pay more, pay more just to get it. To <laughs> but uh, I, I, you know, I got my Jamestown Jammers. Nice. I, I could have worn my hat uh, instead of what, put on my Jay's hat, but uh, but yeah, that was all in all. It was a it was a good time. Who won the uh, Galacticon Cup overall? I cannot remember. <laughs> I, I think it was an online person. Boo! Like <laughs> I, because once I'm out of the tournament, I I don't care. Yeah, I'm the same <laughs> way. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's fun. Yeah, I always try and make it out there when I can, just to at least say hi to everybody. Yeah. I I feel like I didn't get to spend much time with everybody though because I was only there for the one day. And it was a shorter con, like Saturday. 
Yeah, we we, don't, we were there from what ten to six, eight hours though. Yeah, but we spend a lot of time on, on those uh, Q and A's. Yeah, true. I don't think we really need Q and A's unless you're really going to reveal something. Yeah, which they used to do. Or maybe if if you do have if you do a Q and A, you just fifteen minutes. Yeah. Bang bang. Mm hmm. That's something you can do with the online folks, just to keep them entertained. Yeah. I guess you could set that up in a room if you wanted to participate live. You could, but. But let's yeah. let's mess this out. I've heard people go. Every tournament should hold do the same, you know, have the same format as the Canada Cup. So it's brackets. So it's not. That'll take too time. long. Yeah, <laughs> We've had, we have barely enough time to get the ones in that we're doing them this way. <laughs> Uh, and, and but people were like, yeah, but you're constantly, you know, because you're constantly playing, so you get like five matches in a tournament. They could go double elimination. Yeah, give you more yeah. matches. And I was saying that no, you, you you can't do that. That's what's make the Canada Cup special because you know it's right a where you do that in. Yeah, it's like the G one. Yeah. I I don't mind the one and done. You're done. You know. Yeah, because it's go. not like there's there's several tournaments to play in. It's not, yeah. and then you get to talk to people. Like, I'd rather talk to people than play the game. I can play the game anytime. <laughs> and it was funny because, so for, for the Canada Cup, you know, people would come up and so the order uh, is A, B, C, you know, A, B, C, D brackets. And people would come up, okay, you're in A bracket. Next guy in line, you're in B bracket. You, yeah, you know, so split, it, up the, it, split up the groups. <laughs> it, gets, it gets, you know, split up. And Jeff, and Jeff and Josh come up to me and they're like, you know, we've been coming to these for like 25 years. Can we be put in the same bracket <laughs> for once? <laughs> I'm like, sure, but why? You guys play each other every week. <laughs> not, not when there's something on the line. <laughs> and uh, so you know, yeah, sure. I, you know, at this at this point in time, I'm like, I, you know, it's so randomized what, what you get. No, right. I, I I put myself in the uh, we had a low tier uh, Cronus fed. And so I'm like I'm playing Fortune. <laughs> uh, a, a Cronus Canada Cup would be fun with all those monsters, <laughs> those statted up guys. That would be that'd be a lot of fun to play. And it would take maybe five minutes, but oh yeah, it'd, it'd be done. <laughs> First to roll their finisher wins. <laughs> but but that that was you know it was it, it's just something different. But yeah. And there should be set rules for tournaments, because mm -hmm. like, no one, no one knows, you know. Right. What are the rules for this tournament? Is it double elimination? Like for for do I get a roll? You know, because I I created years ago the uh you know you gotta pass your your uh DQ twice, mm -hmm. just because the first Canada Cup so many people got DQ'd it was right. I'm like okay you gotta fail twice and that that just became kind of like standard in mm -hmm. tournaments. But, not every yeah. tournament has it. Yeah. But it's it's just one of those interesting things. I call that referee's leniency whenever I do that in my in my feds. Because I don't always do it, but I, I tend to do it more often. I call it refer referee's leniency. <laughs> hey, you better stop doing that. But if you try it again. <laughs> my, my friend Rob used to have a, he, he had like a, a, a scorecard of 10. Mm-hmm. So if if you have a DQ of six and you roll a four, then he would subtract two from your ten. Okay. As soon as you used up all your ten, you're done. You were DQ'd. That's a that's a cool idea. I for my GWF I use a yellow. You get you know, like a yellow card. So you fail, you get one, two, and then on the third one you're DQ'd. I like butchers. Uh... You, you you if you fail on your first DQ attempt, you get to roll it again, but that's like your warning, and then the, you don't get to the re-roll again after that. I do that on my stream, call it the mulligan <laughs> for the first one because it's basically, hey, I saw you, don't do it again, and then you know, like if you get caught again, then you're done. No, no, everybody's some a lot of people have cool house rules, and that's something we could cover it on. on a yeah, if we've done it before. We could do it again though. Because I I learn more and more stuff people do that I kind of like. Yep. The thing with me because I 
pretty much only exclusively play on Twitch right now. The less stuff I have to keep track of, the better. Because I'm not watching chat, you know, second screen, all that stuff, making sure everything is, you know, I'm still online, all that. <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to just keep track of the cards. And uh but we can we can uh if you have any a little I oh, can't really say it, Mount Rushmore, but do you have any big standout moments that you were uh, a big, you know, when you think of Galacticon that come to mind? Well, I won the Galacticon Cup in, in Cup in 2019. <laughs> I was the first person to, to, when they ran out of room on the Cup, so I was the first person to hold the title, and they let me take it home because Todd said, you're one of the handful of people I would trust to take this home and get it back. <laughs> so he let me bring it, bring it home. And then the world shut down. I had to mail it to uh, Kevin Butcher whenever he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's that. And then there's um, oh, so many, so many stories. Um, I think the who is Jeff Manning is, my, is still my highlight of Galacticon. Yeah, that's, that was, that's one of the funniest. Another favorite of mine is it involved you when they were having that death match in the uh, the Strongsville <laughs> Hotel Galacticon Wrestling Geek Fest, and they were brawling past us. And we just sat there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the wrestler and the ring, and the ring announcer move. gets on the mic. Uh, if, the, if the wrestlers come towards you, please move out of their way. We're like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> We're bigger than both wrestlers and have a hundred pounds on them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they worked around us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did kind of feel bad about that after the fact. <laughs> yeah, there's some, uh, <clears throat> you know, for me, it's hands down, you know, the dice bag moment. Everyone's that's a good one. But for, for me, that's funny. Um, there was another one where we were, we were watching wrestling in Pittsburgh, and we're we're at a show, and I have Pete Beck and Lori Beck behind IWC, me. and uh, I'm sitting beside uh, Jim Steinhoff, and Jim's you know Jim's questioning me you know oh what do you think of this this you know just because I'm looking at it from a different perspective, mm -hmm. and Lori's jumping, moves <laughs> goes, oh my god. And, and and Pete said to me, he goes, he goes, nah. He told Laura, he goes, if Mike flinches, <laughs> then you know there's a screw up because it was one of the matches. I was like, oh, nope. Yeah, I I know the exact spot you reacted to. Um, Gory was getting a reverse neck breaker, and he came down on his side. I think yeah. shoulder first. I think is what it was, and, and it just like it made a horrible sound. <laughs> <laughs> He seems all right, though. I talked to him afterwards. I'm like, you all right? He's like, yeah, I'm good. I'm like, it looks like you took a pretty pretty hard shot. He's like, I did, but he's like, I I, I lucked out or something like and, that. Uh, I remember talking to him afterwards. Ophidian took a big took a bad bump in that as well. Mm -hmm. That was a four way match. Yeah, and I did did the old. Oof, oof. <laughs> mm. Yeah, those those got those two that we mentioned were uh, head and shoulders above the two opponent other two opponents in that match. I forget who they were. Yeah, but you could just tell who the. <laughs> <laughs> who who was carrying those ones? And 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 there are things like um, moments that stick out was when uh, Steve Minskoff gave out a Kuma. Mm -hmm. I still remember being absolutely blown away because everyone had bootlegs back then, but our bootlegs were on like, a piece of paper. <laughs> you know, on a piece of full scaff. Mm -hmm. His paper. Everybody's got these bootlegs, or they were on uh, like Mark Ashby's Microdot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't have printers back then. <laughs> Ashby had a, had a printer. And, you know, his were top notch. Oh my god, these are printed out. Yeah, same size of a card, and I still have a bunch of those. I mean, that's a. I mean, Steve's involved in another big Galacticon memory for me, where he sat me down at my first Galacticon and told me everything I was doing was wrong, and I'm glad he did because. You know, you are an idiot. <laughs> <Yeah>, you, sir, <laughs> are a moron. But I'm going to tell you in the nicest way possible. Give you some advice. <laughs> and here's a bunch of bootlegs too. <laughs> and then there's 
Yeah, he was. Mm. I, I enjoyed that a lot because he, he didn't have to give that. I mean, I'm a little 13 year old kid. <laughs> and then there was a, a Myron Coleman incidents where uh, Myron came back. <laughs> I was there for his return. And a lot of people were put off by that. <laughs> He was he, he was fun though. I had a good time with Myron. I remember I sat down in front of him. And he had a disposable camera. And he took a picture. And he says, "There we go. Something for the plastic surgeon to work with after I destroy you." <laughs> that stuck with me. <laughs> and uh, I'm pretty sure I beat him. You know, spent a lot of time in bars. Mm-hmm. And- I do have another thing too. People ask me, and and I've seen people on the board. Well, you know, I I don't have money or I can't make it down. And uh, there were years where I literally came down with maybe twenty dollars. I would pay. No, I I would have. I'd, I'd go up to people. I'm like, I have an air mattress. Can I have? I'll pay you ten dollars to sleep on your floor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Nobody said no, but I just, I, you know, I had a really low wage paying job, but I mm-hmm. didn't have the money. Right. But I would make sure I set aside even five bucks a week. Yeah. Just for gas, even. Mm-hmm. It's doable. You, you know, can always go for one day, too, if you don't want to do it like I did this year. I did, it just didn't work out, you know. And, uh, you know, you, it, it helps to have roommates. Mm-hmm. You know, th- there were some years there were four of us in a room. Yep. I was there for a lot of this. <laughs> you know, and as we got older, you know, you get better paying jobs and so on and so forth. And mm-hmm. and uh there was one year where um uh my daughter was starting university and we had to come up with sixteen thousand dollars <laughs> to pay for Fine. all her 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 uh rent and food and books. Yeah. We didn't know we had to pay it right up right away, so that cleared out our accounts. And I'm like, I'm not going to Galacticon this year. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's when it was going to be in Cleveland. And Jeff got a a uh, a GoFundMe, and I yep. had no idea it was happening. And a lot of people chipped in and got me down there. Yep. I always remember that. It was Jim Steele, yourself, Jeff Manning, Grant Pachoco, and David Little. Mm -hmm. that's why when Jim last year he was like I can't make it you know some stuff happened I'm like Jim I'll start to go fund you for you buddy Mm -hmm. said we'll get you down there we got him down there yeah it's a very generous group it really is the Galacticon crowd it's a it's a one-off though you can't do that every year right (laughs) so don't get any ideas Jim (laughs) and it's not like you know and you can't be like well, I made it to one. Hey, guys, can you front? No, no. Yeah. You got to put in your time. Right, right, right. Yeah, Jim had a streak on the line, which unfortunately, due to the circumstances with outside of his control. But it, we're, everyone's still counting it because he still made it to the virtual. Okay. Yeah, it should count. Yeah. Well, virtual's <laughs> counting. My streak is still going. Yep. <laughs> virtual's count. So that, that, was, that was proven. Virtual My streak point. isn't that long because I missed 2014. <laughs> the one with the live event. I was saving for my wedding. <laughs> yeah, that can, that can be a thing. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I'd have a streak of like close to 30. 28, I think. Seven was my first. Yeah, there, like I said, there's way too many because some of these guys, you know, we've gotten to be, you know, Great friends, and it's like an extended family reunion almost. Yep. I know with social media and stuff, we keep better tabs with each other than we used to, but it's still, still cool to see everybody in person. And that's the reason I show up. Mm-hmm. There's always somebody new that you click with too. Yep. Like I said, I, know. I hung up with two guys, Kevin and new guy <laughs> who I don't know his name. <laughs> They were nice. I, t- I didn't talk to him very Watches long. Watches it. He puts it in the comment. Put your name in the comment. <laughs> <laughs> Call Mike a jerk. <laughs> doesn't have Facebook, so. Uh, that's all good. Oh, it's pretty good, but we should probably wrap this up. 
yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. If you have not done so yet, please give the channel a subscribe if you'd like to see when we go live, which is kind of sporadic lately. We were pretty consistent, but with everything going on, it's been a little all over the place. But typically, it's uh, Mondays at noon. We drop the episode. Um, while you're here, scroll on down to all of our friends who make Phil Singer Games related content, including the official Phil Singer Games podcast roll up, the Legends team's Uncharted Territory, Grant Pachoco's solo promoter, Dizzy Dice from Lee Lomprey. Here on YouTube, we also find solo promoter from Grant. Uh, you'll find Dave Little's Heartland Championship Wrestling, which I believe just celebrated five years of live videos. No, that's the digital. The digital, okay. I know I saw that too, and I was like, "Oh, because I, I popped into I popped into one of his shows uh, a few days ago." Mm -hmm. There was like fourteen of us in there. Yeah, I, I made the mistake of doing mine on Twitch instead of YouTube. <laughs> but um, so, and then you'll have Brad plays eighty one here on YouTube, Bucky seven four nine. Uh, I'm on Twitch kind of sporadically right now because we have a lot going on on the home front. Uh, trying to figure out the best course of action for that. Um, check out Mia Mara from Jack Duracos. Uh, help him out with his music. Give that a follow. And uh, yeah, so I'll put that link down there for that. I think that covers everything. So yeah, if you have any Phil Springer Games related content you'd like us to share, please let us know. We will definitely include it in our links below. Okay, then. Yeah, that's all I got, everybody. Have a great one. Yep, see you next week. Later. Later.